Alola everyone, it's the Munch and welcome back to Pokemon Sun and Moon. Last episode we hunted down after another pair of Ultra Beast Pheromosa and Buzzwool and today we're going to be continuing our Ultra Beast quest by heading back into the hotel here on Route 8 where Looker and Annabelle have got another mission for us. So if you guys are excited, make sure to hit that like button and let's head inside. And it looks like once again we're in for a surprise as we've got Mina here, if I remember her name correctly. Oh, here you are at last, Orange. That's right, I'm here. I've already been able to gather all the intel we need about the UBs this time, so the Chief has already left to help secure the site and protect the surrounding areas. Oh wow, they're actually doing their job this time. Anyway, we've got UB03 lighting. And I don't really know what the bottom part there means, but here's Mina. Hello. Is she German? This precocious young lady here was my informant this time. Really now? They sent me here on an errand, since I'm not busy doing trials or anything. I don't know, there's just something about Mina. I feel like she's just not all there. <laughs> hmm, who is that? It's a secret. Oh, and I had one more order I was giving. Or was it a request? Either way... What might that be? I was told I should have a real serious battle with Orange after I got back. I don't really know why, but it seems like maybe it's some sort of trial of strength. So come on, let's have a battle. Have a Pokemon battle against me! Sure thing, Mina! Alright, then let's get going already. Time for Mina to show you her full power. We'll get our Z on! Oh yeah, let's do it! We're taking on another trial captain, and it is going to be Mina. I didn't actually know we'd get to battle her during this mission, because I know you can battle her by going over to the Pony Gauntlet. If you guys remember, she said once we beat all the other trainers, we can take her on. But I guess we also get to take her on in the story, which is pretty cool. Of course, Mina is a Fairy-type trainer, or she uses mostly Fairy-type Pokemon. So I don't really know how our team is going to do against her, especially considering we've got Mina and Callum on the team, and they're not exactly the highest level Pokemon here. So I am definitely going to swap out to LT Gray and go for a couple of fire attacks. But yeah, I was not really expecting to battle Mina before the next Ultra Beast mission. To be honest, I wasn't even expecting to see Mina here because she seemed like uh, probably the most minor of the trial captains. Um, like she was pretty much only on Pony Island and we met her for like, literally two episodes or something in the whole LP, so yeah, she was definitely the most minor of the Trial Captains as far as being involved in the story, but maybe that's because she's going to be more important to us here in the post game, as it seems like she's got something to do with the next Ultra Beast. As you guys saw, it was called Lightning or Lighting. I think it's Lighting, but I want to say Lightning every time I see it, because it's literally an electric type, so I just think of Lightning, but I guess Lighting would also be electric. Anyway, her cleft key finally goes down. I don't know why I'm arguing with myself over lighting and lightning because clearly his name is lighting not lightning and Nina is going to get level 41 there which means I believe she will be evolving as well as Callum actually uh, they will both be evolving after this battle because I think I did get the max happiness on Nina finally oh my gosh what was that you guys heard nothing which is why we're moving right along and we've got Puka coming out I don't know actually what her next Pokemon was oh Granbull that's why I was thinking I should bring out a poison type but we don't really have one right now because we don't have P hat on the party and I don't think anybody's got any steel moves or can even learn steel moves I don't know why but my whole party they like cannot learn steel moves for some reason but that Granbull not gonna take as much as I was hoping for from the Thunderbolt there and it has definitely got the earthquake oh my goodness that hurts I mean, I expected it to hurt a lot. I don't know why I still think that Alolan Raichu should have Levitate. I guess because it's levitating above the air, but that's because of its Surge Surfer ability, of course. It can ride on the electricity, but uh, it doesn't have Levitate, unfortunately. So we're going to get the heck out of here. And if another Earthquake is coming, if I still had Poison Jab, probably would have taken out the Granbull there. But unfortunately, we don't. And the Granbull is faster than us anyway. So the Play Rough is going to take down Sarah without even trying. And to be honest, again, I, I don't really know why I brought out Sarah, knowing this thing is a fairy type. And come on, Oculus! Do you really have to keep on coming up with the notifications? I literally just muted it, too, and it's still making noise. But yeah, I got the Oculus Rift not that long ago. Actually, I pretty much just got it yesterday, so the day after my birthday. Oh, yeah, by the way, thank you guys so much for the overwhelming about of thank yous and just uh, nice messages on the previous episode because it was my birthday episode and uh, the Pokemon Center kind of did that little jingle so a lot of people did 
um, congratulate me and say, I guess not thank you, but yeah, basically just congratulations for the birthday. So I wanted to thank you guys for all of the kind and awesome words. I really appreciate it. And I'm sorry that I haven't been posting as many episodes as I would like to. I've kind of been slowing down a little bit, but hey, we are in the post game now. So I figured, you know, it wouldn't be as bad to kind of take it a little bit slower now that we've gotten done with the main story of the game. Um, wow, nice. We did actually get the freeze on the Wigglytuff there. And it's going to stay frozen too, which means that another Ice Beam should take down the Wigglytuff here. And Mina has still got two more Pokemon. I'm actually quite surprised Mina's team is so tough. So I didn't think this Trial Captain would be so tough. I mean, I guess she is the final Trial Captain though. So she's definitely the closest that you can get to being an Elite Four without actually being an Elite Four, I guess. Um, I think now that we've taken on Mina though, the final Trial Captain we've yet to face is Sophocles. And I'm not sure how we really do that. I know that we can battle him later on in the game, but... Well, I guess, one, I don't really want to spoil it, because I do know how to do it, but... The other one is that it's kind of a special battle. It's not really like the other Trial Captains, where you can just go up, talk to them, and do a little side quest to fight him. Um, at least the ones on Akala Island, and then Melee Melee, because I guess that was just Ilima. But yeah, Acerola was obviously an Elite Four, and then Sophocles, we just haven't battled him again. And now Mina is the final Trial Captain, so now we're battling her. Anyway, someone is learning Flamethrower, and I guess it is Callum. I am definitely going to give him that, because Flamethrower is a pretty powerful attack. Even though Flame Burst, I guess, is also pretty powerful, but Flamethrower is just a little bit better. And her final Pokemon is going to be a Ribombi, which I'm a little bit scared of, to be honest, because this thing is super duper fast. So it is obviously going to be faster than El Tigre here. But I think El Tigre can take on whatever hit it's going for. The Pollen Puff. I don't even know if I've ever heard of that attack before. But oh my gosh. We somehow barely survived it. And actually I don't think we're going to. Because the Flare Blitz recoil damage is definitely going to take us down. So El Tigre once again taking one for the team. Bringing himself down to bring down the enemy. And he is going to go down. A brave soul for sure. Nina is going to gain another level though, uh, but I believe both Callum and Nina should be evolving off of this, so goodbye Mina and hello Nina. Or Callum, actually, because I guess he's going to be evolving first. Or she, because actually Salandit can only evolve if it's a female, and apparently female Salandit are extra hard to find in the wild. I don't know why I got so lucky. I found one on the first try, but that is going to be evolving into Salazzle. Really awesome fire and poison type Pokemon here. And of course going to be a new one for our Pokedex. We will get that nice and registered. Another full page of Alolan Pokemon. And we're actually not done just yet because of course we do have the Type Null who's also going to be evolving. But check it out, the Toxic Lizard. Actually with that unique ability. Wait, are you kidding me? Did I just get trolled? Why isn't Type Null evolving? Whoa, you're surprisingly strong. Then it's no problem. Turns out, you're strong enough, Orange. Strong enough for what? It seems that my precious young miss here is not to be trifled with either. What, she's your miss? Okay, I'm out of here. What are you talking about, Looker? She is rather odd, isn't she? A real individual spirit. I guess so. But now we should get our heads on straight and get to work. I do not like it, but I'm in charge of backup once again. And for you, Orange, the beast balls you'll need for this mission. Alright, we get another set of 10, even though I think we still got plenty left. First, the regular reports let us get them out of the way, my young friend. Madam Wick finished analyzing all of the data that we gathered on the last UBU caught. If you wish to learn more about that creature, you should speak with Madam Wick in the Ether Paradise Secret Labs. And now, it is time we get to work. If you need to ask me anything, I'm here. Alright, Mr. Looker, we do need to ask you where the heck the Ultra Beast is located because either he didn't tell us or I wasn't really paying attention once again. But tell me about the UB. Codename Lighting. Yes, I can tell you about it. It appears to be an Ultra Beast that can wield tremendous electric power, as its name implies. Sightings were made in two locations, Lush Jungle and Memorial Hill. It seems highly likely that the creatures are on the move around Akala Island. The sightings indicate two specimens, so the goal of the mission is to find and protect two individuals if you can. Alrighty then, we've got our next mission, two more Ultra Beasts to hunt down after, and I did not mean to actually press that again, but never mind, let's go off to the Lush Jungle. Or I guess Memorial Hill, I don't really know which one we're going to find the Ultra Beast in, but before we head off over there, I should actually heal up our Pokemon, because they got a little beat up by Mina. 
Well then, I suppose our little type no friend needs a bit more time to get nice and happy for us, so we're gonna keep him in the party for now and keep on racking up that happiness so that eventually maybe type no can evolve, but I really thought I already had the max happiness. So I talked to the lady in Kony Kony and she seemed pretty excited about our Pokemon, but either way, we are now in the Lush Jungle, which was not very far at all from that hotel, and we're gonna start looking for the Ultra Beast, which is not quite gonna be this Pokemon. Instead, we got a Trumbi. We can definitely hear the Ultra Beast music though, I'm curious if it's in the entire Lush Jungle or just that main entrance area. Oh, I guess it's uh, the whole Lush Jungle, so maybe we can find the Ultra Beast back here, right by the Moss Rock. Nope, looks like not yet. This is of course the rock you can use to evolve your Eevee into Leafeon. We were here so long ago and it's crazy that we're back so soon. Running around looking for wild Pokemon that aren't the Ultra Beast. Honestly, it's just a really good time, guys. Nothing annoying at all about running around not finding the Pokemon we're looking for. Seriously, there's nothing annoying at all about running around looking for a certain Pokemon only to find that you can never seem to get the right one and it's just regular old wild Pokemon over and over. Come on, Ultra Beast, where are you? I'm curious if maybe the Ultra Beast can only be here or if it might also be at Memorial Hill. Like if we go over to the Memorial Hill, will it also have this music? Uh, that kind of makes you think the Ultra Beast is there, but really, I guess it's just kind of uncommon. I'm gonna keep looking around though, but oh, okay, I guess it's not in this area of the Lush Jungle. This one's got the music though, so the Ultra Beast has to be somewhere around here, right? Either in this area, or I guess the north, because, oh, over here too, we still got the music, so yeah, I guess maybe I'll look around this palm tree, and nope. Is this even a palm tree? I don't know what kind of tree that is there in the middle, but please give us the luck to find this Ultra Beast. No! And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. It is finally time. When I had seemingly given up, the Ultra Beast has finally appeared. And this is UB03 Lighting, also known as Zerkitry. I have a hard time actually saying its name, Zerkitry, but it's kind of like Circuitry or Circuit City. Rest in pieces. But this guy is a pure electric type Pokemon. And I guess to start off this battle, before I forget, I'm going to try to go for the Quick Ball. Because honestly, the Quick Balls almost worked out against Buzzwell in the last episode. And what the heck? Do I really not have any more Quick Balls left? Oh my gosh, I have no Quick Balls left. How could I? I have defeated my own game of trying to catch stuff with Quick Balls every time. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. But this guy is going to go for the electric terrain right off the bat. I like how he like plugged his wires into the ground there. I don't know if those are wires or what, but his hands, I guess. He like plugged his hands into the ground and made the electric terrain come up. But yeah, I'm not really sure why I went for the false swipe there. Obviously, it is not going to do nearly enough damage to bring it down. And this discharge definitely will. Sarah does survive though, so we can at least go for the sky uppercut here. I don't know how much damage that's going to do though, but looks like yellow HP Close enough, let's go for the Beast Ball already. We've got 21 of them, so I think we should be okay to catch these remaining Ultra Beasts. Honestly, they have not had the uh, highest catch rate ever, especially with the Beast Balls. Seems like they catch every time, and this guy is no exception, as we have caught Circuitry. Or Lighting, in case you don't know its name yet, but we're about to find out either way. It's kind of weird it doesn't tell you their real name until you register it in the Pokedex, which makes me question. Is the Pokedex naming these Ultra Beasts? Like, are we choosing the names for them? I don't really know, because they have code names, according to uh, Looker, but that's another one registered in the Dex Zerkitry. Our next Ultra Beast, the pure electric type glowing Pokemon, one of the mysterious life forms known as Ultra Beast. Astonishing electric shocks emanate from its entire body, according to witnesses. So, I mean, we were witnesses to it ourselves. Even his tail is like the thing you plug into the wall outlet. Thing. I don't know what those are called for some reason, but yeah, pretty cool attacks there. That is circuitry and you're going right to the PC We've successfully caught the UB still one more to catch and I don't know if it's also gonna be here in the lush jungle But I'm definitely gonna look around we already know that first one took a heck of a long time to find So I'm expecting this one will be no different and it is gonna take us a little bit to get come on little ultra beast I know you want to come out and play or terrorize people or whatever it is you Ultra Beasts do. Man, Ultra Beasts are really good at hiding, aren't they? Especially in all this tall... Blah, blah. Oh my gosh, it has appeared once again. The second UB-03 is here. Zerkatree. 
And I guess this time I'll talk a little bit about my strange conspiracy theories regarding the Ultra Beast. Oh, by the way, I did mention that all Ultra Beasts have like a certain stat they specialize in. And Circuitries is of course going to be the special attack as it gets raised right off the bat there. I actually really hope we can go for a Sky Uppercut. I don't know if we will though. Oh man, this thing is definitely faster than us. And yeah, that is going to take down Sarah there. Not going to live with the affection this time. And that kind of sucks actually because he does get the Beast Boost. Raising that special attack even higher now, which is going to make this a little bit tough for us to weaken. Unless Puka can maybe be faster, but yeah, what I was about to talk about, in case you guys haven't noticed just yet, but the uh, four Ultra Beasts that we have battled so far, including Zerkatry here, kind of look like certain characters in the game, at least to me. And I know this has been a popular theory, but I don't think it's been proven yet or what their real connection is because it seems like very vague in the story of the game. But I am, of course, talking about the Ultra Beasts having an uncanny resemblance to certain characters in the game, like Lusamine looking similar to Faramosa. Lily kind of reminding me of Nihiligo, and Gladion slightly looking like Buzzwool, but Circuitry here, of course, looks like ya boy Guzma with the white spiky hair and the black attire. I think it might just be coincidence, like maybe they had an idea when they were starting up Sun and Moon to make them be like alternate reality versions of those characters, but maybe they scrapped the idea or maybe the designs are just based off of the humans and they actually have nothing to do with each other. I'm really not sure, but it's kind of hard to deny that at least Lusamine Lily and Guzma kind of look like they're three Ultra Beasts. And then Gladion, while he doesn't really look like Buzzwool, apparently Buzzwool strikes poses just like Gladion does. And that cannot just be a coincidence. Like, I honestly think the Ultra Beasts are alternate reality versions of these characters, or they somehow got inspired by them, altered themselves to look similar to those characters. I don't know, it's just kind of too coincidental that four of the characters act and look very similar to the Ultra Beasts. And I think all of those characters have actually been to the Ultra Beast world before, so it's not like they don't have a connection to them. I don't know about Gladion actually, but at least Lusamine, Lily, and Guzma have definitely all been to the Ultra Beast world. Same with their dad Mon, who could definitely be the inspiration for a certain other Ultra Beast we'll see later on. But let me know what you guys think. Are the Ultra Beasts connected at all to these characters? If you guys have any ideas or know anything that I don't about this theory, definitely let me know in the comments because it's super interesting to me figuring out exactly what the Ultra Beasts are, because it seems like even the Pokemon games themselves don't quite know. But either way, we did get it down to the yellow HP, and I've been talking my butt off for quite a while now, so let's not delay the inevitable anymore and throw that Beast Ball. Hopefully catch Zerkatry here on the first try. We got three shakes, and we've got a catch. Ladies and gentlemen, we have caught another Zerkatry. Really awesome name, by the way. I know I said it was... Kind of hard to pronounce for me at first, but once I realized it's like Circuitry, Zerkatry, I thought it was just the coolest name ever, even though it has a really weird spelling. But already registered that to the Pokedex, so you are going straight to the PC. And that is it for our Ultra Beast hunt here in the Lush Jungle. It was actually a lot shorter than I was expecting, I guess because we only had to catch two Ultra Beasts this time around instead of almost six of them. Yeah, I think last episode, I guess we caught two in Pokemon Sun and four in Pokemon Moon. So I'm expecting that the next Ultra Beast we hunt after, there will probably be four of them here in Pokemon Sun. But either way, before we head off to talk to Looker, I'm going to heal up once again. This Pokemon Center actually happens to be the one where they sell Quick Balls as well. So I definitely make sure to stock back up on those so that next time we can try to catch the Ultra Beast with that Quick Ball. But let's head back inside and talk to Mr. Looker. What is it? Has something happened? Yes, sir. I have finished the mission. So let's call the Chief once again. Oh, Chief Annabelle, how I've missed you so. And I guess every time we hand over something to put into our pocket, it must be like the Pokedex info. I finished sending the data from the UBU protected to HQ and to Miss Wick as well. Thank you for your hard work, Orange. We should unravel the mysteries of Circuitry, also known as UB Lighting. Well, that's great. Because that thing was a powerhouse. Once again, it looks like things aren't as easy as they seem, though. Ugh. Are you alright, ma'am? Yes, I'm fine, Mr. Looker. I just felt a passing vertigo, but I'm fine. Please do not worry yourself. But I must! I insist on worrying! You've always had the stamina of a machamp, Chief! I cannot believe this is nothing! No, please. It is nothing so serious. I'm sorry for causing you to worry about me. I insist that I really am fine! Putting all that aside, I must say that we have found a great ally in Orange. What a fantastic trainer! It was all that I could do to simply keep that circuitry away from the town. 
The UB seem to get terribly aggressive when they spot me. It's like they're treating me as prey or an enemy. What? I'm sure it's only your imagination, Chief. You must be exhausted. I don't know. It seems pretty serious to me. And oh man, Grandpa Nanu sneaking his way in once again. I'll let myself in. Mr. Nanu. What are you doing here, Gramps? I love his sandals. You've been keeping well. <gasps> you, you, you are. <laughs> so it's you, 100KR. Or, sorry, what is it now? Looker. Yes, it is. What's this? No smile for me? Here I am, coming out my way to bring you the info about the UB that you're searching for. Are you really? That monster you're calling Blade. It's on Ula Ula Island. I'll tell you more when we get there. And your information, is it all true? I'm the Kahuna of Ula Ula Island. If you don't do something about that monster for me, our guardian's not gonna be happy. Oh, you don't want to mess with the Tapu Bulu. Thank you for the information, Mr. Nanu. See you around, then. Alright, see you around, Nanu. He did tell us about the next Ultra Beast, though. UB Blade, I believe? Mr. Looker. Yeah, yes, ma'am? Mr. Looker, do I take it that you're acquainted with Mr. Nanu? I knew him once, I thought. Never mind that. Right now, we need to focus on our mission. What is the backstory between Nanu and Looker? I'm so interested now. Of course, yes, of course you're right. If we have reports on a new UB sighting, then our mission is our first priority. I will move to Ula Ula Island and prepare our new base in the motel there. Please join us there as soon as you're ready, Orange. I will go to Ula Ula. I trust that you will as well, Orange. The motel is on Route 13. Well, I will see you there, Mr. Looker, and I'll see you guys in the next episode because that is actually going to be it for today. We've caught yet another Ultra Beast, actually a pair of UB-03s or lighting or circuitry. I don't know why they have so many nicknames for these Ultra Beasts, but either way, that is going to be the end of this episode. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll tune in for the next exciting episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon.